Yes, hello, folks. Welcome to the weekly Manchester United podcast. As always, I'm your host, Phil Brown, joined with my regular co host, the excellent James Rhodes. Of course, this podcast is going to be dominated primarily by the news that Erton Hag has been dismissed um, after a disappointing result at the weekend against West Ham. Probably, in my opinion, of all the low moments during Ten Hag's time, may have been the least culpable performance. Um, so I thought he played actually quite well for most of it. And I think it's fair to say that um, that result was more about the players than it was about anything that Ten Hag said United up to do. Um, I think he has every right to expect professional footballers to take simple chances. Um, but nonetheless, um, it is a collective. It's a body of work that extends beyond Correct. West Ham. But, um, you know, I, I, despite the fact that Nike and we saw arguably one of the worst decisions you'll see with VAR, just an absolutely appalling decision that with a penalty that will not be given again the rest of the season. Um, but here we are, familiar territory. Um, we felt that this might happen during the last international break. Um, we'll evaluate any of us, their decision making process at this, um, what they do going forward. And, um, you know, I'll give my opinion on Ten Hag. And I really think his the second season made the rest of his tenure impossible. And I think that United were an impossible football club to manage in the second season. And I think that that was where everything really that made that contaminated Ten Hag. For a lot of things, it weren't his fault, to be fair. But um, but a football manager has to be responsible for football performances and football results if they're not responsible for anything else. And um, it, it, I have to say, I have mixed emotions, maybe because one, I just I wanted this to end. Uh, I, I don't lose any sleep over football managers getting sacked. They walk away with enormous amounts of money, and it's the most likeliest outcome in the job. But I still don't take any pleasure in someone's demise. Yeah, and and obviously, you know, I think for me the biggest factor in all of this as we look at it is um it felt a bit doomed to fail. You know, and I, and I, and I think they gave a go of it this year. But when you look at everything that's happened since Ineos have come in, you know, they're trying to cor course correct, right, on 20 years of bad ownership, 20 years of mistakes, 20 years of problems. And, uh, and Ten Hag's first two seasons are strongly in the frame with those, um, you know, with those 20 years of, uh, you know, the tail end of that, where they're looking at this, this whole takeover and putting a club on the market and everything. And you have a disastrous season, horrible season, things go wrong. Even despite all of that, if you take Ten Hag and his ability out of the equation, you have new people coming in who have replaced everybody at that club right at this point in time i mean every single executive position minus like two individuals that have really nothing to do with football have been replaced um and you expect that they were going to make the change before they won the fa cup went through everything in summer it was quite public and from that point everybody really knows ten hogs not their guy no matter how it's kind of framed um, he got a shot at it. I think that the thing that was, you know, the results were very disappointing this year. And I think that what's, what's fairly damning about it overall, where they felt they just had to make a change on the whole body of work is that you could, you could, you can buy the injuries last year and say, all right, it casts some doubt, right? The, the, the complete, the injuries, the chaos, everything that happened last year and cast some doubt and say, all right, well, those might be the reasons things went so poorly. But there were no signs this season of anything improving. In fact, it was worse than mm -hmm. last season so far with more players, players that he's familiar with in Matthias Delict, Masrawi, a settled back five, even though it still doesn't have a left back, which is kind of unbelievable, but we've been over that many times. Um, mm -hmm. But at least a settled back five, a settled center back pairing, a settled situation there um all the the forwards have been available there it's it's not like it was last year and the things had just haven't improved and i think that they just felt there were really not enough signs that there was you know you'd have to be you'd have to be living in some sort of 
some kind of delusional land for me to to look at what we've been doing and say, yeah, you know what? I see, I see the positives where this is going because there really weren't any, and um, and it just got too much. Like you say, on the body of work, you know, the decision is made after West Ham. It provides probably a good time for it since it comes after a loss, but it's not really that. Like you said, it is the it is the body of work. They were considering it during the last uh, during the break, and I think for the most part. They wanted to give them a little more time, but also give themselves time to to line things up, as we've kind of seen the stories on that they've been exploring things and talking to people and looking at uh, their all of their options, which I don't think they expected to do this early in the season, but it's just a necessity of the of the position. And mm. you know, and there we are. I do think it was an impossible job for anybody to succeed in in how things have been set up, and and that's always why I felt. A fresh start under the new owners would have been the right thing. It's it's early enough in the year that you can still salvage it. Mm-hmm. You can still turn us around. You can still do it. Obviously, the biggest question that we'll get into it on that is is can you get the right guy now that mm-hmm. you want for the long term, and how much do you compromise on that um, to try to salvage the season? Yeah. So there's a lot to unpack. Or um, first of all, you know. If you it's, you can do this with the benefit of hindsight, but you know when you look back on the summer, there was a familiar uh, when when Ruth van Nistelrooy came in, you didn't need to be you know clairvoyant to say there's a high probability that in in the first few months of season ten, Hogg gets replaced by Ruth van Nistelrooy, yeah. and maybe that wasn't any else just thinking I don't know, um, but it looked that way when they were when they brought him in. So yeah. you've evaluated other candidates over the summer. you brought in this potential replacement. I don't think in that position it's realistic to expect this guy to succeed with that because anybody who's ever worked for a company in a management role, upper management role, and your company gets bought, you already know you're mm. in a very vulnerable position. right? Yes. You know, you're in a much more vulnerable position than lower-level staff. You're a key personnel. And you're usually in the firing line. And it's very difficult to convince people that didn't hire you that you're the right person. Um, yeah. And uh, so you can't lead from that position of weakness because you're asking players to do things. Being a being a being a consummate professional is really hard. Yes. You have to do a lot of things you don't want to do. You have to sleep right. You have to eat right. You have to execute with 110% intensity. You have to do amazing number of things right. Um, and you know you have to get alignment in terms of personality and say the dressing room. I mean, that's even hard, as I've said before, in a marriage. You know, getting two people to agree on things and, and a, on a collective goal is not easy. Yep. Players will do it if they believe that this is going to lead to reward. If they stop believing that this will lead to anything, then that you get that five percent drop off, which is yeah. human nature, by the way. I'm not, and I'm not, players deserve a responsibility and criticism too. But yeah. you know, there's an old saying that you know a bad battle plan executed with intensity is better than a good battle plan that's not executed with intensity. So yeah. you have to be able to lead, and players have to trust that what you're telling them and what you're making them do. And, and imposing standards and discipline on them and certain, you know, um, just expectations that will lead to a result. But when you are in a position where you're just managing the result because every single result is terminal, you can't implement methods. You can't yes. look at a long-term future. You, you're, you're always just plugging holes. And that's where mm. I think any of us have to take some criticism because yep. I feel like they sort of half committed to them. Where it was like, okay, we don't think. I mean, I remember talking to this podcast, James, where we talked about if he stays, I think he'll get to about October. Yeah. And if it's not working, they'll call him. Right. Yeah. But um, when you're constantly interviewing other people, and I understand contingency, you have to be looking at other people. How long do you need to make up your mind? First of yeah. all, football is not rocket science, right? You're not mm-hmm. trying. Build, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a large hadron collider and CERN here for you know. This is if you do the right things, you have the right people, you invest in the right, the right areas, you'll be successful, right? Yeah. I mean, eventually. So, yeah. to me, it's like one of the things that any of us have to do next is make sure they're not in a position where we'll give it to you and see if you can do a good job. 
Correct. I mean, can you imagine if you needed CFO leaving and you know, give give it to Gigsy to the end of the season, let him be the CFO and see if he can do right. it. Right. <laughs> no, never do that. Right. Yeah. Anyone else's job is to make sure somebody doesn't get a go and see if yep. they can do it. Their job is to make sure they can properly evaluate someone and yep. say, you have the attributes, you take all the boxes, uh, you are a candidate as a result of an exhaustive process. So we're going to give you the job. If they, they you can't turn around to uh, no football, serious football club, no serious sporting institution turns around and says, "Here, you have a go at the top job here and see if you can do it." Like this is, this is, you know, what, what, what are we talking here? You know, I mean, this, so this is where any Osnai where they're going to be evaluated, and and, and I yep. felt one of the things that I felt that was different about yesterday that. I hadn't seen before was yesterday was the first time I really saw the media take aim at Ineos for the mm -hmm. NXT. Yep. And James, they will have been in situations where they've never experienced this type of focus, this type of, you know, um, scrutiny. Omar Barada was largely an, an anonymous. Jason Wilcox was largely anonymous in their positions. Mm -hmm. You know, Kristen Vavell, all these people. And now there's enormous focus on you. Mm -hmm. Jim Ratcliffe brails for all this on how you do your job. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's unfortunate because many people, and I'm sure this view too, that we're just so sick and tired of the cycle of new manager, new manager, new manager. But anyone else you put under selection pressure, you just simply can't be 14th. Um, you know, negative goal difference, you know, horrendous in Europe. There's no mitigating factor. Like you said, last season we had injuries. You can understand that. The football club was a, a tumultuous. It was a mess. Yeah. Um, this season, you know, you, 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 I don't care who you are. You're not spoiled. If you don't want this to continue at your football club, no one wants this to continue. <laughs> so United, United had to make a change. And they, any of us clearly didn't want to make this change. Mm -hmm. But the question any of us are asking of Ten Hag is the same question they have to ask of their next manager, which is why I want nothing to do with Thomas Frank. Can you win us the league? Right. That's the only answer. Yeah. So you can't go to someone and say, well, Thomas Frank's a bit good. No, you have you, – whoever your next candidate is, can you ever – I mean, I'm serious, Mitch. Can you ever see a day when Thomas Frank would be holding the Premier League title aloft at Old Trafford? I don't see that. Yeah, and and look, I mean, it, this is this was the, always the curiosity, right? Because Omar Barada had this this thing come out about this Project One Hundred and Fifty winning league in three years, and the thing that was a bit that's a bit funny about the whole the whole thing in general, and where you say it was just an awkward setup is you've only got your current manager in place for two years, and you're talking about winning the league four years from now. Um, you know that means you need to start. We know it's going to take time. We know it's going to take building we know it's going to take a, a an upward trend of progression towards that area to be competing for leagues and all of that um it means you got to have the right guy now and so i think that that question is totally correct we need to have the manager in place at united that they say this is the guy who's going to build this team to winning titles because to win it in three years you're com you need to be competing in two you know, and that means we're very, very close. You know, we're, we have to be very close to that. And so they need the right guy now. They need the right guy now who's going to build it. And and so that gives a quite a bit of a of question here, which is, is the right guy available today? Is the right guy available in summer? You know, who is that person? And how do we get there? And um, and they're the ones that are going to live and die by that answer, you know, frankly, at, at mm -hmm. this point in time. And, and that's that's their job. They've got to do it. Um, and they have to make it on that decision, you know, of of who can we build this team with to win the league and to compete for titles with, because they've they've stated publicly, and obviously we know, but we've they've stated publicly that's their aim. They've put a timeline on it. They've done all of that. So you got to have it because essentially, if you appoint a new manager next summer, you think about this timeline. If you appoint a new manager next summer, that means they get one season before they have to be competing for titles. And then two seasons before they have to start winning titles. That's not a lot. Um, and that means you're not going to have time to be chopping and changing again, you know, a year from now. Now, one of the things that I think we all hope that we'll do as well as a part of owning this club and running this club properly is that it's not so much of a every, starting over every time you have to change a manager if it doesn't work out because there's no guarantees in football. 
um, that you get continuity behind the scenes, that you have an overarching theme, at least if you, for lack of a better word for it, with how we're going to run our football club. So if it doesn't work, it's not like you've just wasted another 600 million going one direction to just go suddenly the other direction, like we've done with Jose to Ali to Ten Hag, like back and forth, back and forth. Because that waste every time you do that, you waste two years, three years, four years, and and you start over, mm-hmm. and that we need to not do. So so these are the big considerations. Is that one? We do have a lot of good players in this team. I think there's a lot of talented players I at Manchester really United. Mean. So you need someone who can get the most out of that pool of players as well, right? You know, and and that's going to come in and say, yeah, I'm not going to throw out half of these players. I want to use a lot of these players, um, and. And then you need someone who can build with that team to to win, and uh, and that's what matters, and and um, and that's what they have to to solve, and 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 there's a lot of questions that go with that well, to, to determine it. James, identity, playing style, that scaffolding is erected from the top down. Yes. And then this is what I mean about why you don't give the job to somebody and see if they can do a good job. Correct. Yeah. And that it has to be um, selected, a, a derivative of all these other evaluative um metrics you yeah. know remember when Ranić said liverpool hard club but that was based on they they first said an identity and then said this is how we want to play this yes. is how we want this club to play let's find someone that can do that it then you have continuity it then you have stable departments that are all adjuvants to the to the football to, to, to what happens on the football pitch that are yeah. all symmetrical that have earned out all the kinks that understand this is how we support this football team <laughs> because the club has to support the team and United have not been ever able to join up those dots and they haven't really been trying to do that until this summer yeah <laughs> that's a that's not an exact science so that is something that will take a while to um to find you know it, it, the levels that you need so that when you go from club the on a slot it's almost invisible yeah. Because so many of the things that you need, so that you don't have revolution every time a manager comes in, mm-hmm. where it, you, it's it's a continuation of the same you know pr- process, the same identity, then this is how you get stability. If that's any else's job to make sure that um, this football club can operate and function in such a way where moving on from a manager is. Well, it's certainly not a small deal. There, it, it it doesn't have as many perturbations as it would have at United because everything walked out the door with that manager, and yeah. now you have to start all over again. Yep. So, any else's job is to make sure when the manager goes, as little as possible, walks out that door with them. Because if one guy is res- one guy is not responsible for the success of the football club, nor are they responsible for the failure. Yes, exactly. That. Football club's way too big for that. Yep. So, um, so you know, any else's job, why did Ten Hag fail? This is a really big question. And understand where he failed. This is where we bear responsibility. This, this is where the football club failed him. And this is, these are the things that need to be fixed because this is about the next guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, any else cannot be in this situation again two years from now. This is where they have to make the difference, yep. and um, you know the 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 whoever they select next, you know, that's all them, and yep. they're gonna, you know, when you're talking about three, two three years winning the league, I would forgive if they're off that part if they if they're off by a year on that target. So if a guy yeah. comes in and he's not there in two years, but he's getting closer, okay, I could live with that. Yeah, for you know? sure. But um, but look. On the positive side, it's the first time we've had owners talk like that with that type of ambition. Yep. That say this is how we're going to redefine success. I think there were other things that were factors. I think um if you look at Amrabat comment last week when he was asked why he didn't sign for United, he said ask Jason Wilcox. I think um when Ten Hag clearly wasn't overly sold on Agarte, who it looks like was Jason Wilcox, you know, mm-hmm. signing. Um, you, I read an article that said he didn't speak to Bayern there for the first couple of weeks. Um, I think those are factors. I think, um, 
when you work for somebody with a different remit and then you get new owners that change it and usurp a lot of your authority, that's really difficult to adjust to. Yeah. So I think that there were other factors in this, and I'm sure people like Agarty this morning are relieved. Um, yeah. But he was a bit unfair to be dropped. We played really well uh, against Fenerbahce. But, um, you know, this is, uh, I mean, this is a this is a big decision for any of us, and um, sure. it's uh, you know you, most most managers feel it. United, it's it, I don't think it has to be defining for Ten Hag, but it was the only decision United could make. They they couldn't persevere with this. Yeah, and and you know as you said, it's the first time that owners have said what they've said with those ambitions, and the positive is, and and this is sort of the slight argument against some of the feelings of like oh we've been through. Um, you know the, the 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 carousel right of uh of managers over and over and over of that but this is also will be the first time since sir alex ferguson left that a manager will be appointed for the right reason too mm. because this was you know how they chose their managers you might as well just put names in a hat and pull them out how they chose them you know big name big popularity very little, you know, thought process for it. You know, when when Louis Van Gaal came in, he he had a very specific idea of what he wanted to do, right? And then he was sacked, obviously, as we know, because it was discussed a lot last last season um, after winning an FA Cup, and they brought in Jose Mourinho, who's nothing like him, you know. And then they they let him go, and they brought in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on an interim basis and gave him the job off of an emotional high of you know beating psg in the in the champions league and some recovery um and it's been it's never been for the right reason because it's never been people there to make the decisions for the right reasons now for the first time we will have that they will make the decision for the right reason does it mean they can't that they are 100 percent to get it wrong right no but obviously i think we have the, a better chance than joel glazer picking him out you know, and, and deciding on on who he wants or someone completely unqualified for it. We certainly have people who are experienced, people who um, will be choosing it on the basis of not just doing all right and getting top four. And I don't mean this as an insult to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but that's why he got the job. He was someone who could essentially, and to some degree, cover for the fans, cover for the owners, do a good job, bring some history and emotion to United, but he was not an appointment on the basis of we want to go win the league next year. Um, and and now I think we'll at least make the decision for the right reasons. And that we have not had. We will make the decision for the right reasons and the right people should be appointing them. And, and I think that that's, that's key as well. Um, I don't want Jim Ratcliffe picking our next owner, you know, our next, uh, our next manager, right? You don't want Jim Ratcliffe saying, well, who do I like for manager? And that's the one benefit of it going past the summer in the way that it has, even if it may have been easier then is, you know, you don't want Jim Ratcliffe picking the owners. And I think he would, uh, the, the manager, I think he would say the same thing as well. And I think that's why they passed on it in the end, in the summer with everything that happened is him as the owner saying, this isn't really, I'm not really the guy to make this call. You know, and and they've even talked about that at Nice when they they made mistakes at Nice. They they've publicly acknowledged that when they came in that they were changing up managers like every six months. You know, they went through like six managers, seven managers, and him and Sir Dave Brailsford were very active, very involved, making these calls. They shouldn't be, you know, and they need to appoint the right people and let them make it. And we've got those people in place with Omar Barada, with Dan Ashworth. They put with Jason Wilcox. They're there. They'll make the decision, and I think they'll make the decision on on the right basis and that will give us the best chance for success that we've had in a, in a long I mean, time this is important James, because one you have to have respect for the business that you're in that you don't understand the subtleties that yes. you, need to, you need to you know recognize that indicate whether someone can be successful in this particular job or not but also someone's job relies on the next guy being successful so this has never happened. You know, Woodward's job didn't depend on any manager being successful. You know, Richard Arnold's job didn't depend on any manager being successful. These are the people that are going to appoint um, the next manager are going to be employees of Manchester United who are also going to be evaluated on success or failure. Yeah, They hire the wrong managers, make the wrong decisions. It's their future too. 
Yeah. And so, you know, in, in Solskjaer's defence, you know, all United were trying to do since 2013 was finish top four. Correct. There was never yes. an attempt to try to win the league. That's what the yep. men and the women's team. So, um, so the gimmicky stuff, you know, the the you know the the, the basically translucent thinking of let's just put somebody in here um, that can get us top four, and yep. um, you know that will will be fine. Because as I've said before, you know, really until this summer, there hasn't been a single employee at Manchester United whose job depended on winning trophies mm -hmm. in the last decade. Okay, yep. there's not a single manager that would have got sacked if they'd have kept finishing top four. That would have been yep. enough to keep your job. So, um, you know, there's a football club that um, completely changes ethos. It's going to take a while to fix that. But, you know, the, the, this is that culture that needs to change is the hardest thing to change in any business because it's yep. in the walls, right? It's so difficult and it usually requires huge turnovers. So it's 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 turbulent in the beginning because yep. you're the the, the the atmosphere, the culture is repelling the toxic people and they fight before they leave. And yep. then as the atmosphere starts to improve, people that are attracted to that environment that will change how your, your fortunes, you know, start coming in. And I think for United, this is something that, you know, any of us have to look at and say, it wasn't just a Ten Hag failure. Yep. They have to have conversations with players that say, the success of the next manager is also connected to you. If yeah. they fail, you fail. And there will not just be one, you know, there will not just be one scapegoat. Okay. So they failed too. They were the reason why United didn't win the game against West Ham. It wasn't Ten Hag. I mean, these were, you, you go watch City, you know, West Ham, more than a month ago. Holland had a hat trick after, I don't know, half an hour with yeah. fewer chances than what United had at the weekend. That's different. Now, if you need to take those chances, that penalty probably wouldn't even be given because it was so inconsequential in the game. They probably look at, okay, you need a 4-0 up. Who gives a shit if they get a last-minute penalty? Or if it is given, no one cares. It's not even a discussion. It's, but, but, you know, big deal shouldn't have been given. But it's consequential because they don't take chances. And, uh, you know, as you say, metaphorically, it's like a boxer without a knockout punch. If you, you keep someone in a fight, you run the risk of getting knocked out. Yep. Simple as that. That's a major weakness. Now that's confidence issue for me. But when I look at some of the decision making teams, you know, I, I was listening to him talking about a mod not playing against Fenerbahce. We said he had to reward Anthony's training. I, I actually took that more of an insult towards a mod yeah. than I did <laughs> as a compliment towards Anthony. Yeah. So then it comes on against um, you know, West Ham at the weekend, only this time he's or 60th minute he come on. Yeah. I'm like how much training could they have done with <laughs> kind of I know that they had they one had session <laughs> on the team yeah. rather than the last five minutes. And, and by the way, like, he put a great pass in that resulted in a goal. Yeah, and then I'm looking at the Porto game going, <laughs> well, Garnacho was our best player against Spurs, so he needed to play. But well, okay, why was he on the bench then? Um, and so we'll hook up Marcus Rashford at halftime just about him playing one of the best halves he's had all season. I mean, it, it, these are things that don't make sense to me. Mm, and, and I'll yeah. tell you something, James, you see that comment about a Mars training? That wasn't a million miles away from the Jaden Sancho comment. Uh-huh. Who, by the way, was nasty this morning, totally unnecessary, but disappointed in him. I, I think that what, was just, just to be clear, I, I believe that that was fake. Okay. I've just, because I see, I've seen it going around. Oh, was um, it big? I just saw yeah, it. I, I, I know. I, I saw it Hayes. too. Hayes and, and was it? De Hayes was real. De Hayes was real. De Hayes was real. The and I just wanted to clarify because I saw it. My I looked myself and I was. Let me just go look. It's not on. It's not. And from what I asked, it's not on his story. It's not actually there. So some someone posted. You just, it community, you just community note me or leave you bastard. <laughs> well, I you know it's no, important no, to be I, accurate. I, I, I know that you wouldn't want to be no, 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 accidentally, no, no, no. you know, putting it because it's so easy with shit that gets spread around to like for those kind of things. But no, De Gea's was real. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. I don't know about um, that one. <laughs> I just don't understand that. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't that, either. Uh, yeah, I mean. I'll, I'll, James, in any business, there'll be players in Real Madrid's dressing room that don't like Angelotti. Yeah. There'll be players in City's dressing room that don't like Pep Guardiola. In any business, in any relationship with human beings, there's ups and downs. Right? Yeah. And there's fights, there's arguments, there's 
resentment, you know, there's just life, right? Yep. So, you know, just don't see the point of that. And uh, yeah. just, you can just uh, do like uh, Rafael Varan, just just like the post and move on, which is what he did. <laughs> well, you know what, though, James, yeah. like Rafael Varan was you needed a right to move Varan on, of course, you needed a of right course. to move the hair on. Yes, right? I agree with um, all the both of those so, things. Yeah. You know, it's about respecting the club. Yeah, in my opinion. I agree. I, I, yep. just, I think it's unnecessary, and you know, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other players feel the same way. I'm sure you know Martial. Lots of other players feel the same way uh, yep. about this. Um, but you know what? You also. People like Sancho, you know, accepting that he, he this is fake, but it wasn't just Ten Hag. You let down it was the football yeah. club, it was the fans Correct. and the fans, you know? yeah. Yeah, so Agreed. You know, I don't care what Agreed. you think of Ten Hag, but you owe the club and the fans something that you never gave. And um, so to me, it's like um, you know, De Gea, you know, he gave great service to United, but that just disappointed me. But seems unnecessary, yeah. But um, you know, like you said, it's never really one thing, but maybe. Any of us will learn from this too. That uh, you know, when I was watching United over the summer, I think it was the Arsenal game in LA where we were at. You, Van Nistelrooy had a presence on the side, mm. and looked like a manager. And then I don't know if someone talked to him, but he started sitting down a lot more after that game. Yeah, he went saw the baddest game in San Diego, and he was taking a more reserved role. Yep. But you, that had a weird energy. It definitely energy. did. Yeah, well, it like you know, this is a bit like you know, you're having moral problems and bringing Channel Tatum in as a roommate saying, All right, and then three months later, just you're just here for support. Oh, hang on, my darling, you know, I mean, um. <laughs> And in recent know, weeks, he was he was picking up yellow cards. I mean, against Porto, he's out there, he's on the ref, he's doing you know, manager things. It was it was kind of like. Mm -hmm. You know, predictable. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of predictable. I mean, yeah, like they're, they're, everyone has different opinion, and when you 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 pull the plug on the life support machine, yeah, and you you know it's, it's a hard thing to accept sometimes when you don't see signs of life, and you have to come to a conclusion that there's, there's probably not going to be a revival here, and everyone's going to feel differently about that. You know, um, I respect all viewpoints on this because I, it, I don't know how you can have anyone with certain thing but and i took a long time before i got there but there was a point really after the liverpool game and definitely after the spurs game where i was like okay you know I, I i'm really out of reasons to continue to have confidence and faith and i know everyone's yep. threshold on that is different james and i don't know what the tipping point is um but I don't like giving up on them too soon, but that was where I felt this is going nowhere and I, I can't do this anymore. Uh, some of us also based on conversations I'm having with people who, you know, players, players, representatives on things that, and you have to take some of that with the pinch of salt too, but it was like, okay, you know, this is an inevitability. So where do yeah. we go here, my friend? Where do we go? Well, you know, obviously you have a, a few complications in this because some of the names, some of the people that they might want to hire, we kind of already know from summer, right? That they talked about a lot of them are off the table. Um, Thomas Tuchel is obviously one that people have, have spoken about a lot. Um, and he wasn't available and, you know, wasn't interested in the job, turn them down, essentially, depending on which side you sort of believe, whether it's mutual or not, turn them down. He's not available. Um, Pochettino was interviewed. He took the U.S. men's national team. Um, McKenna, he signed a new contract, and, and it'd be a big risk, you know, hiring McKenna. He, he, you kind of expected this. He stuck with Ipswich. Their team is not great, and they're really struggling this year. That'd be a really big risk there in, in experience-wise. Um, you know, the then you have candidates like Julian Nagelsmann, who is a very good manager, very accomplished manager, but... He recommitted himself to Germany before the summer and has been pretty, I think it's been pretty well reported that he's wants to stay for the world cup and that's his whole intention and focus. So that makes that fairly unlikely. 
you know, you get Jabi Alonso. There's been a lot of admiration for someone like him. Again, a, a manager who's done an incredible thing, winning the league with, with Leverkusen and all of that. Um, someone who is accomplished, who's experienced, who has probably whatever these factors you would want to consider of a top manager. I mean, yes, he also has the Liverpool connection, but it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. Um, but does he want it? I don't know. There's a lot of indication that he'd be waiting for the Madrid job, you know, when Ancelotti leaves, whether next year or the following. So, you know, the candidate pool is a little bit narrow. I mean, one of, one of the things that is maybe hard to accept, but potentially a reality we've got to look at is you look at appointments of, and, and I know that they can do this because they've had more time, right? You're talking about mm. slot coming in for Klopp and it being a smooth transition. And obviously they had the time to build the foundations under Klopp to allow that smooth transition to occur. There's a lot more hirings like that. You know, Vincent Company going from relegated Burnley to Bayern. Yeah. Uh, Enzo Maresca going from newly promoted Leicester to Chelsea. Uh, Arnie Slot going from Feyenoord to Liverpool. A lot of these, a lot of a, sh there's quite a shift in the appointments of managers recently where it's not so much just big club to big club, you know, among the big clubs like Pep going from Barcelona to Bayern to the city job after they've already built the club and won a title. Like there's a lot of difference. It's different now. And, and so I could see some of that. And, um, you know, among the names that were there, uh, Ruben Amarim, still someone very admired that I think fits a bit more of the more accomplished manager. I mean, again, yeah, coming from a lower league, yes. But Sporting hadn't won a title for 19 years before he was there. And now he's won two and he's well on his way to a third this season, doing an incredible job, also doing well in the Champions League. Um, a good candidate. Unlikely that you can get someone like him during the year because he's on his way to winning a title and has, you know, committed most of the season to them, but you could get him in summer, you know, and then you have the names like, like that, uh, that you've already mentioned, like Thomas Frank that, you know, that they like, but is certainly more in this tough to see winning a title with, with a manager like that, but maybe more similar to a type of a slot or a Moresco appointment, but is United ready for that? I'm not so sure about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but this is the tricky part about the future is, is it it's changed a little bit from on the manager front. Who can, who can you go get, you know, there's no pep. We know there's no pep out there, right? I mean, the closest thing is maybe Jabby Alonso on his way to it, but there's nobody out there. That's a sure thing at the moment. No, everyone's a risk. You know, even yeah. if you go go with a Zidane or whatever, you know, someone mm -hmm. that's out of work, you know, Xavi alone, you know, Xavi, of course, ex Barcelona. Yeah. Um, you know, I think United could see where here's a guy that worked with you know a bit bit of chaos with Barcelona, took over from Cumin when when Barcelona were in a mess, won them the league. Um, you know, against Real Madrid, European champions, you know, yeah. done this for 16, 17, 18 year olds. Yep. Um, yep. And, um, you know, I know there's people who watch a lot more football than me that don't agree that he would be the right choice. But, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to select anyone and say they're the exact right choice. I think where I have said this before, where I would be concerned about people like Thomas Frank is that United are in a bit of a difficult position with their players right now and that mm. they need to show ambition to these players that shows they're serious about winning trophies. I don't know if Thomas Frank walks into that United dressing room and gets their respect. And people, you know, fans and the rest of us could say, you know, who these players think they are, but this is human nature, right? Mm -hmm. I think that Thomas Frank has no connection to Manchester United um, so he wouldn't have a lot of grace if he starts losing. You know, Solskjaer loses, he has grace. Vernester Roy loses, he has grace. There's, he has no equity with Manchester mm -hmm. United fans. So, and then you're asking for a lot of trust that this guy is good enough, despite the fact that he's never won anything, um, that he can get you, you know, stay with him, stay with him. I think that we, because of his lack of equity, because of his lack of success in his career, I think it would be difficult. Uh, you know, you look at Vincent Company. Vincent Company, you know, they 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 lost away to Villa in the Champions League. They lost, you know, again in the Champions League away. Um, you know, it's it, it's a hard transition. And yeah. with players, I think United need someone that's going to come in that has, you know, Van Nistelrooy has 
has had a career that few players in United could, could look yeah. could look down upon. And and to be so, fair, company as a player did as well at the very least. He did, but he he had a decent career as a centre yeah. back, where yeah. you know he, it was you know he wasn't in any Ballon d'Or runnings, and you know it was yeah. okay. You were a decent centre back. Yep. So. Um, you know, people like Xavi, Zidane, you know, um, Van Nistelrooy, these are massive names in world football that had an obvious outstanding career, that had major impacts on how teams played, that have immediate respect, that um, understand, you know, dynamics of dressing rooms, of big egos, and how things can go wrong, how things go right. Um, and um, I think that's really, really important. I mean, he he took over from a Dutch guy at Barcelona that were a mess and knew yeah. how to buy a dressing room and bring you know harmony. Okay, he's an ex Barcelona legend, but um, I think for United going down the coach route, the, the 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 clubs that do well with the coach route are the clubs that have stability behind them, that have departments that know how to support them and not expose them at United. I think you need to be really, really strong. I think you need to have experience at the highest level. I think you have to come in and command respect. And I think that um, for the psychological impact, because a lot of United's problems are psychological, you can see it. I, I think that they can't go with someone underwhelming, like a Southgate or, you know, like a Thomas Frank. Uh, I'm not saying they should just prioritize a name, but it has to be someone... That's because any of us are going to be held responsible for what happens next with this guy. Yeah, for if sure. you go someone underwhelming and fail, you're going to have a lot of people saying, well, this was obvious it was going to fail. If you go yeah. for you know the very best and, the, and they fall short, you can't fault their ambition. And so this is where they have their their this is the first major, major decision. It's going to be a test of them. And uh this is a tough one. Yeah, and, and and let me ask your opinion on this because I'm I haven't quite decided where I stand on this as well. It's it's October twenty eighth today as we record this, right? There's a lot of season left. United are still in mm -hmm. every competition at this point in time, and 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 they'll have to beat Leicester on Wednesday with Venice Roy at the helm to remain in every competition. But uh, they should be able to do that no matter who's in charge. Frankly, um, how much should it weigh? the factor of the choice as to this season. Like just an example, let's say your guy A is not available till summer, mm. but guy C is available now. Obviously that's a tough decision. Like the extra nine months, seven, eight months of working together, of putting this team in a potentially winning something this year of you could, you know, the Europa league is a competition that is open when you look at the teams in it, you know, that could get you into champions league, even if you can't claw back into top four. Um, that United should be capable of winning. How do you measure that and make that call? Because I haven't decided myself either what the right yeah. answer is. So if I'm Ruben Amarim and I'm getting the call, I'm leaving Sporting right now. If you're going to wait to the end of the season to get offered a job like this, it might never come again, right? I can understand why one or two other managers, the top club, maybe Xavi Alonso doesn't want to leave. You know, I, I, I he could have went to Bayern. But if I'm Ruben Amarim and I'm at a Porto job or a sporting job, I'm leaving. I mean, that's the whole reason why you do well. No disrespect to Benfica, Porto, Sport and all that. Your objective when you get these jobs is to do really well so that you get a move. I mean, this is if you're turning down jobs to win the Portuguese league for the fourth season in a row or third, to me, that is irrelevant because um, it's not going to. I mean, Ruben Amarim doesn't want to spend the rest of his career sporting. Brilliant football club as it is, but realistically, the, the, it's a football club you work at to move on to another one to get to the highest level. Mm. I would be, if, if he gets offered that job and actually wants it, but says wait till the end of the season, he'd be insane because if Van Nistelrooy does really, really well, it's gonna he's going to be a hard guy to shift. He's a United legend. And the contrast, this is going to be a bit like Solskjaer, the contrast between what, what was and what is. If you need to start playing well, playing attack and football, that job's not going to be there for him in the summer. And anyone who's saying the United, I'll wait till the summer, is playing a very risky game because it wouldn't 
be beyond the realms of impossibility to see Van Nistelrooy come in United play with freedom and 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 be you know an, an attacking team that you know has a revival and then you're trying to move Van Nistelrooy out. You know that that is a but, that is going to be yeah. very good. But I mean, the, the general question is: it better to wait to get the right guy in seven months than it is to go with the wrong guy today? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But the thing is, is that if you get an opportunity like this in your life and you want it, you have to take it. Yeah. Because the it, timing is, you know, you you're not, it may not be here in, in six seven months. Well, my curiosity on it is is more like if if you were to consider that. Um, they they could line it up either way and have it all agreed. You know, like Pep Guardiola was agreed to join well ahead of time, right? Um, I mean, even when we hired Eric Ten Hag, we let go of uh, of Solskjaer early on, started the process and hired Ten Hag. I mean, he didn't leave mid season, obviously, but yes, yeah, but he didn't leave mid season from 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 Ajax. They continued to win the, to go on to finish the season to win the title and and see the whole year out. And it, it feels but a lot of managers will... Mr. Roy, though, James. And if Van Roy comes in and revives United and they're playing well, you're going to be a brave man if you're any else to sack Van Nistelrooy to yeah. bring in somebody that could... I mean, the, the, this is what every every guy, every candidate has risk and there's no perfect process. But if Van Roy comes in and does really well as an interim, mate, it, 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 you know, the, the, all of a sudden, the jeopardy of that decision massively increases. So if I'm... A manager and I'm a, a club like Sport and all, no, no disrespect at all. I'd be looking at United going, I can turn this around. We got January window coming up, we can get them revived. I'm taking it now because I want to make sure they... the and I'm nine months in, we can prepare for next season. But I could also see a scenario where there's a number of managers, like regardless of Amarim or somebody else, where they would be willing to agree to join in the summer but see out their current contracts. And, and even if there's financial implications like that like i i don't know of all of the details right but for example like with amram specifically let's say he's got about a 10 million release clause in summer it could be significantly higher right now of course you know, um, you know and, and that you would be of course up, up to him. yeah and that would be my my curiosity when i look at when i look at Ineos and where they go about this of deciding the right person um you know on it is 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 that but I, in general i would i would say obviously I, I guess it depends on the gap between your candidates. Like if you're pretty torn between two and you can get one now versus summer, you just do it now, of course. Um, but uh, well, it's, well, it's, it's an interesting. If, if you're Thomas Frank, or if you, why would you stay to Brantford to the end of the uh, season? Yeah, if, if, if that would be a, a weird red flag to me. Yes, uh, that that yeah. one in particular. <laughs> like, yeah, you want to win the Port Portuguese league respectfully. Yeah. Brilliant foot, brilliant level of football, brilliant, you know, brilliant mad football country, but it's not going to make any difference in your career. You know, no mm. one's going to go, well, he won the Portuguese league for the third time or fourth. No one that that is not going to be career defining. But if you come in right now, you're by this time the summer comes along, you're in a much better position to evaluate, to make changes than what you would be if you come to United in the end of next summer. At the end of yeah. the end of the season, because now you start that process then, and you know if you look at um, you know Ferguson came mid season, yeah, you have to take you know, Ron Atkinson was sacked Nova in November sixth, I think it was, yeah, right away had a, a really good record. Ferguson came in, and you know I know Klopp was on available was was already gone from Dortmund, but he came in mid season. I think that um, mm. this is come in right now is an amazing opportunity for someone. Yeah, I was thinking you, about that too. You know, to me, but yeah, if you, you can't afford it, then that's definitely yeah. that's a different question. But that is a good point too, because you do get a little bit of like um, freedom if you come in mid-season too. Like you start the season, you're getting judged pretty quickly. You come in mid-season, the six months is a little bit of a free hit to yeah. adjust. You know, that's which is a good point as well, because you're looking here's a team in huge decline, which is why they sacked their manager. You're not getting a fresh start with the summer. You get a little more of a free hit like you can't have it keep declining, but you don't need to. You just need to have an upward trend from being really bad to to have mm -hmm. a success in that interim period versus, you know, starting the season. You start losing games. You're already under a lot of and it gives you time to work with the team to figure it out, to 
figure out your, you know, who you want for the summer to prepare. Makes a lot of sense to me that, and, and I do think that would, you know, I do think it's true. I think it'd be really smart of any manager who they do go for if they're in a job right now to say, if I want this job, I should leave and take it right now. Now, if they can't afford them, like you say, they, like we're saying, that is a different story. That's on United side, but for any manager, they would be intelligent to take the job mid season and not wait till summer because. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it is like a, it is, I, it, there's a lot of risks in that, but I, I definitely a bit more of a free hit to take over an interim job than it is. Um, I mean, I think yeah. United will have obviously considered all of this in the, over the last few months because this was a very high probable outcome. So they will yep. have considered, okay, what is Ben Sagan replacing with who? Yep. And um, so I think they will have taken all this into consideration. Um, so, I, I would be surprised, James, if United, someone is, you know, if we said 10 million for Ruben Amor, if you said, say, United board, here's a player in January for 10 million, people wouldn't bat an eyelid. People are like, yeah, go, it's cheap. Yes. Manager, possibly the most consequential hire at a football club, you know, and you're going to squabble, squabble over, squabble over you know, 10 million. You know, you, you're, if, if a manager works out, your return on that investment is massive. So whatever the, you know, for, I understand, you know, PSR, FFP, all that there, you know, um, just profit sustainability, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, I understand all those implications, right? But, you know, United will have taken this into consideration before making this decision with Ten Hag. And yep. um, it has to be, for me, a process that's over quickly. Can't be, can't be sitting here two weeks from now having to see, is it this guy, is it that guy, is it this guy, is it that guy? I think, they have to be swift. They have to be decisive, and they um, have to be, you know, clinical in in their execution. This is why you have a sporting department that is yep. led by all the right, um, you know, all the right incentives, the evaluative process, and they understand, um, you know, how to select the right candidate. When I look at all those managers we're talking about, James, those are all very different managers with very different ideas. It's very different styles. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you can have a short list comprised of managers with completely different identities. And mm -hmm. then that's who we're looking at because, you know, that, so some of that I would have to say is probably the media speculating yes. uh, yep. on, on, on the granularity of some of those, um, some of those uh, links with other managers. But I think, um, you know, I know people are not going to like this, but some people won't. But to me, it, it, Xavi Hernandez stands out. He's, he's available right now. He speaks English. He worked at a club with a similar ethos to United in Barcelona. They bring through young players. Um, but, you know, it, it all depends. You know, but mm. to me, you know, that's a guy that would get respect right away. But whether you need to do it or not, I don't know. Yeah. If you were to ask me today, which I've obviously been asked a million times today, so <laughs> this yeah. case, if you were to ask me today who it will be, I know that's going to be, it would be, it's going to be, and I'm not saying that this is the Don't right say choice, I'm in this. but I'm going to tell you. That, if you I'm say that was right, <laughs> well, my fucking gonna, beef off. <laughs> you're going to have to get, you're going <laughs> to, I honestly think that he's probably the favorite right now. Um, I don't know I how. Think, because I, when I look at the, the people who have been in place like Dan Ashworth in terms of the hires that he's made. Um, he's hired a lot of lower league managers. A no, lot of, I, yeah, uh, well, that works, James. This is mm, I, I understand. I understand. But he has. Right. That is his experience. Uh, and I think that it's a combination of of coaching, being available, being attainable midseason. And uh, there being a lot of admiration for him. I understand. I understand. I understand. But there's something I don't, you know, we talked about it a long, long time ago. There's something that these guys really like about Thomas Frank, you know, and they have since last year, since early last year okay. or this, this, I, I this last season. I understand. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people if this comes to pass, but even just the fact of him being strongly considered and he is, I mean, I can say that without a single doubt of fact that Thomas Frank has been strongly considered. There's something people really, really, really like about Thomas Frank. 
What other this, job is this... strongly considered for? Well, he was interviewed for Chelsea as well uh, when they went with the with with the uh, with the Moresco. So they went with the championship manager, who what it was he had won two seasons as a manager over Thomas Frank. Yeah, at that point in time, yeah. Now, what um, job he been in, linked with? Where he's been interviewed? I have no from? idea. I have no idea to be so, honest. Anna, as far as it appears, and a completely dysfunctional Chelsea, it appears who wanted rid of Maurizio Pochettino because he wouldn't agree to their parameters. Wanted to hire someone like Thomas Frank because he would, um, but nobody else does. I mean, I'm, it's one thing hiring Thomas Frank for Brighton, mm. okay? Because your objective is the there thereabouts. Mm-hmm. One of the things seems when you talk to people at United that you you know just, you know we, we don't understand is the level of scrutiny and abuse and criticism. Mm-hmm. A lot of the individuals themselves can handle it, but their family members. You know, their wives, their sisters, their mothers, their fathers, they're reading stuff online constantly about their husband, their brother, their sister, you know, their, their husband, their brother, whether whatever. He's a fucking scumbag. He's a fucking fraud. I hope his kids die. All this, like, that mm-hmm. has an enormous psychological effect yep. on a family. And yep. they start, we just need, we, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I want, I want this to stop. Uh, and when you put, you know, someone in, in that, like Thomas Frank, you know, even any of us, you go from relative anonymity because United's a terrible place to be when things aren't going well. When things are going well, it's great. You have millions of voices telling you how great you are, but when it's not, you have millions of voices telling you what a piece of shit you are. And that has a major impact mm-hmm. on any human being psychologically. Yep. Thomas Frank's never experienced this in his career. He's mm-hmm. never experienced that type of pressure, that type of scrutiny, that type of um you know pressure on your family and you can do this at Brighton and you're fine but at Manchester United you need someone in my opinion that has experience dealing with that Van Nistelrooy does but it's very very difficult to handle and I've spoken mm-hmm. to all the United managers about it and it's suffocating pressure yeah it does terrible things so uh, to me I think, um, go back to what I said earlier. Do you see Thomas Frank winning the Premier League of Manchester United? The answer that is no. To I me. honestly can't see anybody you're, winning you're it <laughs> with, with how it's been. But look, and I would win the league with United. Thomas yeah. Frank. Look, there's all, there's all, and, and I think, I think it'll probably be the, the, the majority that would agree with you on that. Um, that we'll see it. You know, personally, I, I've, I flip both ways on on certain aspects of it. I'm not even talking about Thomas Frank in particular, but on both aspects of it, which is why, you know, personally, I see someone like Ruben Amarim, who's been in the Champions League regularly. Portuguese league is a a weird one, but I would certainly not say it's not without a lot of pressure as well. I mean, Sporting had the the whole incident where their fans literally invaded the club and physically assaulted players and coaches and things, you know? I'm (laughs) the 90% of the games. Of course. Well, and yeah, then, to a to a degree, to a degree, and, and, and to a degree, yes. And 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 look, there's always going to be a step up from anybody if you're not hiring. You know, I understand that why why you look and say, okay, well, Chavi has had the experience at Barcelona. I mean, yeah. Have, so you know, anyway, sorry, go ahead, just. No, no, you know, so I understand. Like, you get someone like Chavi who's had experience at Barcelona. You know, he had struggles with the pressure at Barcelona, and that is a little bit of a like an orange flag, maybe on his on him coming to United that he had a really hard time about with it with the pressure at Barcelona. And their media can be pretty brutal. Um, I'm not sure that ours is any better. It may be a little different. I'm not sure it's any better. He had some difficulty with that, um, but he has had that experience. And if he was willing to take it up, then he'd be saying he's willing to deal with that pressure again. Um, yeah, it's tricky. It is a tricky situation. Um, someone like you know, someone like Julian Nagelsmann, who's managed mm. big clubs, national teams, obviously would be a perfect candidate, in my opinion, if you could get him because he's got the experience and he's an excellent coach who fits a lot of their other ideals. Young, you know, the, the types of things that they like. Um, it's it's a challenge. It is a, it is a, this balance is certainly a challenge. Um, at, at United, but I'm just saying it as a as a fact of 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 knowledge, opinion aside. That for whatever reason they really like Thomas Frank. The, the, um, Frank team has have, a lot of guesswork here. There's a lot yeah, of I think correct. he may win a trophy. I think yeah. he may. I think this may with other guys that have done it. 
There's yes. no guesswork. They, they, yeah. Their track record shows I've done this. And Correct. then you're asked to believe it. He might be able to do it. And, yeah. you know, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't see anyone coming out saying, you know, Thomas Frank is transformative. Thomas Frank has done this with me, done that with me. You know, this is, you know, he's done a good job with Brentford to keep him in the Premier League. But yep. I just, you know, we're talking about, what, what, how would you identify, what, what, if I asked you to define his style of play, what would you say? Yeah, I would say he's a he's an okay, well, I don't know manager either. in that respect, right? Because he has changed it for so sure. What yeah. would make him yeah. a Monty? I don't know what his I don't know what his style is. Brantford don't score a lot of goals. Um, they're not the most exciting team to watch. Um, they're a decent team, you know. They I think he's done a good job with them, but um I mean I've watched them, you know, United have taken some Haydens there. We had to beat them at Old Trafford twice mm-hmm. when they were playing absolute shit, where they yep. really only needed a few minutes in a game to win the game. Yep. And I'm like, I just, I, I I don't see it. I mean, I'm like, it's an opinion, so I'm probably, I could be wrong about everything, but I just don't see any obvious character. To me, if I've seen a million managers like him in the Premier League that are decent managers, do a decent job with clubs that keep them up, keep them mid table. And they just say go through, uh, and and they you know they they're never anyone that wins anything, but they've done decent jobs. Like Marco Silva, mm-hmm, I mean Marco yeah. Silva is a, is to yeah. me a better option than Thomas Frank. You know, I mean, so to me, I, I just, I, I, but it's average. But when no. do, when does somebody take a step? Like let's take a, a different manager name that we've spoken about once before. Just just to round this kind of point out, because obviously it's all opinion and and, mm-hmm. and we'll see what happens. But someone like Iriola, right? He's taken a step to Bournemouth. He hasn't been there that long. They've improved dramatically under him, yeah, I would but- say, you know. When does that manager take a step up and to where, you know, given like our stature at this point in time? We're not a top four team even, you know. We've not been consistently on the top of English football. Um, you know, wh- wh- where does a manager like that take a step up to prove so themselves? To me- a manager takes that next step up with a club who's only ambition is finishing in the top four. So you go to a Spurs, mm, right? the club, and you, sure. you, mm-hmm. yeah, and you start finishing top four. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, okay, now you've dealt with the next level. We're not jumping another level, okay? Because okay, you've taken a, a, a below average Premier League team who's only ambition. If you lose three games in a row at Bournemouth, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Which they it's have, not yeah. Nominal yeah. to your season's ambition. So you don't lose the dressing, you don't lose morale, you're not having people in the media, you know, c- c- claiming your lost games that you didn't, you know, you, it's just totally different. So, um, but at United, you lose three games, you're fucking dead. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're doing, I'm, I'm trying to manage for the result. I'm, you know, I don't have time. It's a whole different process. Players, you know, you've got players, you know, have relationships with, outlets that are toxic that are feeding information to them about their team i mean it's just on the level you can't even mm-hmm. comprehend where mm-hmm. it's you know at bournemouth that's not happening you know you need to get a penalty and gabriel bonahor fucking self implodes for a, mo- a week <laughs> on the radio right I mean, it's just it's, it's bizarre <laughs> you need to play yep. a walk with dog and it's a fucking front page headline in the daily mail you know it's like this is um this 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 is you know the pressure the scrutiny the it, it, it's so difficult and so for me, I think that you go to another club that's a big club with expectation, but not winning the Premier League, and you overperform and you overperform with them. Then to me, I can see the next incremental jump. But taking a manager like Vincent Company and throwing them at the top and going, okay, replicate what Pep Guardiola did because you played for him or whatever is yeah. really, really hard. And yeah. um, it's, it's, United are in a position, James. If this was 2014, Van Hall, give give a job to Frank. It's you know you'll get more time. Fine, but United are in a position where they have to have success right now. There can't be any more Van Halls, any more, you know, soul screens. There can't be any more of these failures, and the cycle has to change. So this next appointment, you have to be as certain as you as you can possibly be, and I, I just don't think that in any world, I'm as Frank even deserves to be in a discussion like maybe to me if he took a you know a, a bigger job and done really well with that team you know you have to look at Moyes did with West Ham I mm. mean he's not in a discussion for anything I mean yeah. to me David Moyes is a better 
track record and opposite to Thomas Frank. But, you know, these trendy coaches are great if they work for a football club that has stability, that understands how to support you, but United are not there yet. Yeah, right, not what I agree with. Yep, let's let's uh, leave it there and we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, maybe as an assistant for a while. We'll see. But, all right, interesting. we will leave it there, mate. Um, thanks to all of you for downloading the podcast. Um, hopefully it's better days ahead. Um, wish Tin Hog nothing but the best. And, uh, thanks to all of you for giving us feedback and retweeting everything. Much appreciated. Jim, take it easy, mate. Have a good one. Cheers, yeah. buddy.